Welcome to the Ohio Arts Council's Rife Gallery. Today we are pleased to present A New World, Women to Watch 2023. This exhibition is a special partnership between the Ohio Advisory Group and the Ohio Arts Council's Rife Gallery to present these phenomenal 11 artists from across the state. This exhibition was co-curated by Sora Kang and Matt Distel. Hi, my name is Sora Kang, and I'm a curator and educator based in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm also the Director of Galleries and Outreach for Northern Kentucky University Galleries. And my name is Matt Distel. I am also a curator based in Cincinnati, and I'm the Executive Director at the Carnegie Center for Visual and Performing Arts in Covington, Kentucky. Sora and I are the co-curators of the exhibition A New World here at the Rife Gallery. Uh, this is a project that is initiated by the National Museum of Women in the Arts. And we are working with artists who are asking questions about the world that they live in and imagining new worlds and rethinking and reordering and archiving the world that we currently live in. Um, when we were thinking about this theme, it's very malleable. It's open to interpretation materially, conceptually, thematically. And a lot of the artists were, of course, responding to the time that we're living in, which was we we're very much immersed in the pandemic. So how they were thinking about inside versus outside, um, what's safe, what's unsafe, um, how they were coping with materials or the act of making. And essentially they were challenged the way we were seeing and you know, moving through the world. We are here in front of work by uh, Catherine Whited. Catherine is an artist based in Cincinnati. She works with a studio called Visionaries and Voices, which is an open studio project uh, for adults with disabilities. Uh, some really fantastic artists coming out of that program. And Catherine is one of the artists that we were thinking about, artists who are currently sort of examining and archiving and documenting the world around them. She starts with large list. It might be something as simple as what are the items in my refrigerator, looking at things in her closet, and then documenting them in these like really sort of wonderful, straightforward ways. Some of these are, you know, more basic and really distilled down to their essential elements. Some get a little more detailed, but I think they all, you know, have this meticulousness to them. Um, and I think I really enjoy the way that her mind sort of like uh, absorbs the environment around her and then puts it back out in a visual form. Yeah, and speaking to that meticulousness, you can see there's like the systematic repetition amongst her works. They're all oriented in a similar size and scale, so there's always this consistency. I think that speaks to this idea of also world building. The act of her drawing and writing is also a very big part of the body of work. Ha Zhang is a multidisciplinary artist. She's based in Cincinnati, Ohio. She's also a professor at the University of Cincinnati Design, Architecture, Art, and Planning program. And she explores themes um, such as colonialism, feminism, and craft. And in this piece, you could see that there is an interplay between both photography and text. She uses the word fearful and avoidant. And there is a level of ambiguity in her photographs, which are self-portraits, but this face is obscure. They're very intimate. From everyday scenes, they depict almost a documentary format of what was going on during that period of her life. And it makes the viewer wonder how these words are in connection to the scenes that we see before us, but also it implicates us to think how those words um, can also be something that elicit a response from us personally or how we can apply them to the work as well. And you could see that the words are neon, they're brightly colored, where they're in contrast with maybe some of the more uh, somber tones that radiate from the photographs. And we can also see that the bottom text avoidant is obscure because it's put upside down. That makes us also have to physically interact with the piece to be able to make it legible. I think that that text flip is important too because it, it um, echoes the kind of disquiet or discomfort or awkwardness of the photographs as well. So we feel a little awkward sort of looking in on these. They're not necessarily intimate scenes, but they're personal scenes that we would normally wouldn't have access to. Um, and this text, even just the brightness of the neon, your eyes they need to adjust, 
Um, this word is flipped over and it's not a typical word. Avoidant is not necessarily a common, commonly used word. And so it becomes this like, am I reading that right? Am I, am I tracking this correctly? Um, so I think that there's like a really nice play between sort of the installation components and then also the, the images that she's selecting. Mm -hmm. And they also feel quite voyeuristic in the sense that we're stumbling upon a scene that feels very personal and everyday. And I think that's really interesting for us to kind of make those connections with the word fearful and avoidant with that as well. So this is work by Erica Townsend. Erica is an artist from South Euclid, Ohio. And these are some more playful works. She's very interested in her own sort of childhood experiences and the nostalgia that comes with that. So she is, in this particular body of work, she's pulling these characters from childhood television programs, or not necessarily all from her generation, but some, and uh, pulling them into these like kind of 20th, 21st century art historical contexts. So things like uh, the big character from The Big Comfy Couch here is sort of shaped like the Vitruvian Man um, and sort of reformatting and reintroducing these nostalgic pieces but through the lens of somebody who's had more of a, a life experience. Um, we have Mr. Rogers here too, who that piece sort of emerges as you get further away. It's one of those kind of like pixelated images using things like these little fuzzy balls, pom-poms. It becomes this really playful, uh, playful way to depict these, these, these works. I think her work is really smart, the way she weaves iconography with pop culture. So she's using language or systems that we recognize and simultaneously she's making us rethink about how we're making connections. So when we look at this character from a television series called My Big Comfy Couch, um, in relation to the format that she displays this character in, which is very much like the Vitruvian Man, we can see how she's taking something that calls from art history, but again, in pop culture, is something that we recognize or we have this very personal relationship with, and then making us think, you know, what does this mean or what does this mean to us? And there's also the thing that she's doing with these scale shifts. So these are all um, products or experiences that we consume at like a television screen size, um, and then blowing these up to these kind of like slightly absurdist scales also kind of shifts shifts our relationship to them and I think asks slightly different questions about why we consume these materials. And I think these are often like kind of comfort um, or sometimes to children's programming is often about education, but it's also about, you know, keeping a kid calm for a while. So I think when she shifts these ideas into these like scales that are a little more uh, awkward, it changes our relationship to that nostalgic material. is an artist based in Kent, Ohio, and her work is an interplay between photography and also the way we experience sculpture. So when we think about the kind of the culture of how we consume images or photos, it's incredibly immediate. And what she wants to do is slow that process down through the act of looking. She makes us very aware of our body. As you can see from these panels, the uh, photographs are embedded behind and what we're actually looking at or what's made visible is through a mirror that's also embedded into the work. So we have to physically move around the piece. We either have to look at it from the side or bend low or peek around a corner in order to get fragments of the image that we then piece together. Which I think is really interesting that she adds this physicality to something that we call a photograph. So she really changes and challenges uh, our relationship to photography in this way. And you're not even able to actually look at the photograph. You're looking at the reflection of the photograph. And it, when you dip your head into these pieces, it creates a really disorienting space, which I, I love it when artists do that, when they create a space that like, you can't quite tell exactly where you're standing inside of it. I think that's really interesting. And you, your, your mind sort of fills in the gaps of information and you can kind of piece the whole thing together. But even so, um, it's, it's a, it's a dis jointed image, it's a disorienting image. What we're able to access versus what we're able to see, which is what we think we see, 
I mean, you know, that's also kind of a metaphor for having lived through the last um, eight years or so. And I think it's really a, a compelling way to sort of think about building an image. There's also a level of playfulness with the works. Um, it forces you to interact if you want to. And I think there has to be a willingness to be even like somewhat silly to be able to like bend low or look at something totally from the side, which is not the traditional way that we typically view art in a gallery, which is very like distance. And there's like a way that one behaves usually when they're looking at work. And I feel like that's also subversive in how we typically interact. Yeah, this is a fun body of work to see a bunch of people looking at, because they're gonna be looking tilting over, leaning over, sort of like making themselves look awkward to do it. So it's, it's interactive, not just for the viewer, but also for the viewer of the viewer. Yeah, and this work is a product of technology. It's almost a hybrid. I mean, the photographic process is technological. Um, in order to create an image, it's an extension of the eye, but in digital form or analog. But the works themselves, uh, integrating industrial materials, that's not an intuitive medium. So you're gonna have to rely on certain types of technology to not only map it out, but to be able to cut metal, to warp it, to embed mirror, sheets of mirror, and to embed photography on it. So I think technology plays um, crucial elements to this work and how it's allowed photography to evolve into something that's extremely sculptural and very interactive. Mikiwa Arimo is an artist based in Yellow Springs, Ohio, and through our conversations with her, she was talking about how this piece kind of originated from the pandemic and her response to it. So being confined to her home or the studio, she really wanted to go outside. Um, and Yellow Springs is very well known for hiking, so she spent a lot of time in the woods. She did daily walks, um, just experiencing nature. And during this time period, she became very interested in the idea of invasive species. And as an artist, she's always interested in this idea of slippage and how language and images kind of interact with each other and how they're often loaded based on context. So thinking about the idea of invasive species and how those words were also relating to the concept of the other um, specifically um, immigration issues and how she found that there were very a lot of similarities in some of the terminologies that were being used for both and they were interchangeable. So we can see how some of those components manifest in this line of work. Yeah, I, I like to, when we met with Migiwa, she spoke about all of these activities as she gave herself a, her own residency. I thought that was really an interesting way to sort of think about <laughs> the, the time of that we were isolating. Um, the other thing that I like about these pieces is don't interact with them, but there's an implied sort of interaction. Uh, there's an implied action that you take with these pieces. They're sort of meant to appear as if they've been hung up, um, but you could roll them up, roll them as a pack, take them out into the woods, do these explorations. So they're, they're almost like field equipment or like things that you would use uh, if you were doing these explorations, which is what Miga was doing. And they're incredibly tactile, and I think that's the nature of utilizing uh, fabric. And we saw a lot of artists kind of moving towards this comforting nature of going to craft during the pandemic as well. And when I was speaking to Migiwa, she, she told me that her mother was a hat maker and that she often like saw these materials being used. Uh, and she was kind of going back to that as well and integrating some of those components into this piece. So it is a bit like a collage. She's integrating, um, you know, more paper-based things into her work. She has things that are implied to be interactive, like pockets that have information that the viewer necessarily will never see, but they're still there. And I think things that are hidden, that's also a big thematic component in Migiwa's work, so it, it, it seems very relevant. I think that you hit on a thing that's an underlying current through the whole show, which is during that period of time where our social interactions became very um, online or virtual, however you want to phrase that, artists were still in their studios and maybe wanting or craving this return to something physical or something with some physicality and the tactile is a real strong component running throughout this entire exhibition.
A big thank you to the governor, the legislature, and the Ohio Arts Council's board for supporting the Ohio Arts Council, this great space, and of course, Ohio artists.